from Toronto, Canada, and CIBC World Markets, Avery Schenfeld. Avery, thanks for being on. Your view on GDP is not that of relative optimism. It's a more cautious view. Why are you cautious about GDP given other people's enthusiasm over Chicago purchasing? I think that we will do better than we saw in the first quarter and, and certainly in the second half of the year. We're going to get the disruptions from the automotive sector, for example, lifted away and a little bit of uh, price relief on gasoline. But my view is that the running rate for the U.S. economy isn't much better than two and a half percent. Remember, the numbers we're seeing now included the benefit of the tax relief that was provided uh, in December. That's set to run out at the end of the year. And I'm not sure what's going to replace that in terms of providing momentum as we think about what the economy is going to look like in 2012. And Avery, with the auto manufacturing, you've got an Ontario. Let's bring up this chart. This is the first for us, folks. Population adjusted auto sales. So we took the auto sales, total vehicle sales, and we adjusted it over 40 years for population. And you can see it's remarkably stable. And there's the big fall off. And Avery, it really shows how far we have to go to get back to the population adjusted average of 17.34 million units. We got a long way to go to get back to normal, don't we? We do, and remember that in the last cycle, we didn't just have uh, an orgy of debt financed home buying in the U.S., but uh, we also had a lot of cars being bought. We had, you know, households having two, three, cars, sometimes four cars on the driveway, and we built up the population of vehicles. They're lasting a little longer, so the drought could run a little bit, too. And remember that part of this is all about consumers' willingness to borrow. Cars are something you buy on debt, and for the same reasons that Americans aren't going to buy houses, uh, they're not quite as enthusiastic about borrowing to buy cars, either. What do you see on debt appetite now? Greg Peters over at Morgan Stanley is uh, really calling for a credit improvement in the second half. Do you agree or is it still going to be challenging? Well, I think that, you know, the signs of life in the economy pick up. I think lenders will be a little more encouraged. I think corporate spreads, which have widened out, uh, which widened out on concerns over, for example, the European situation, uh, may narrow back in again. Uh, but I think in terms of the public's appetite to borrow and spend, uh, I don't think zero interest rates are enough. I really think we need to see better signs of job growth. People have to be comfortable in their employment prospects and maybe right. even at some point also a leveling off in house prices. I think those are the ingredients to really get consumers to participate in full force in this expansion. Someone more optimistic earlier this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance, Sirius and XM113, I spoke with Carl Riccadonna of the Deutsche Bank. And I asked him his expectations for that job number, July 8, a late number this July. I think we could get back to a pace of 200,000 or, or even closer to 250,000 uh, in the second half of this year if we see a, a strong recovery in auto production, which seems to be in the cards given the uh, production schedules that are being uh, 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 updated now uh, that uh, parts are available out of Japan, and also if this energy price trend uh, continues. There's uh, Carl Riccadonna, folks, and I want to frame that. Riccadonna with optimism talking about 200,000. Greg Peters talking about 150,000 is the tip point. Avery, where are you? When you and Benny Tal sit down and talk about the American experiment, are you even at 150,000? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if in the third quarter we get the kind of pop that you, you were talking about there in the clip in the sense that you shut things down in the auto sector, you return them in the auto sector, you're going to have a few months where job growth might be uh, above 200,000. But I don't think that's the trend pace. I think what we're looking at is a trend of around 150,000 or close to it, which would mean that we're staring at a 9% unemployment rate now. We might make some progress in the third quarter. But it wouldn't be surprising to me if, you know, a year from now, we're looking at a 9% unemployment rate again. So I think we're just holding our own. And remember that even a number over 200,000 is really not that impressive to, to really make inroads into what was a massive loss in employment during the recession. We'd like some months of 300,000 and above, wow. and I, I just don't see the engines yet. Okay, watch my pencil, folks. This is critical what Avery just said there. Here's non-farm payrolls. Here's back 05. Here's the, the pencil's coming in. Rex, calm down. Here's the pencil. I'll bring it in. So it comes down here. Here's the boom, and here's where we are. And here's where Avery Schenfeld wants to be. Notice how little blue there is 
where Avery Schenfeld wants to be. Critically, Avery, do we need public policy to get to your 300,000? I think we might. I think at a minimum, we're going to need to extend the tax cuts that are set to expire at the end of this year into 2012 or some equivalent fiscal stimulus. We need to put the emphasis on deficit reduction where it really belongs, which is in the sort of mid part of this century on, on social programs, Medicare and so on. But that's a, a later issue. I think in the here and now, we've done all we can on the interest rate front. We probably need to concede that deficit reduction has to be put off in order to just have enough spending in the economy to really generate those jobs. I didn't hear that from the president yesterday. What did you hear in the press conference? There was a real energy in that room as he was grilled by Juliana Goldman, among others. You're saying the president should not address a deficit now? I think he should address the medium-term deficit, which could mean making changes in the tax system, in entitlement programs, but changes that kick in 2014, 2015, because we're really talking about a long-term structural deficit issue. But I think in the here and now, as a bargaining position, he has to go back to the Republicans and say, look, uh, I also want the economy to be moving in 2012. Uh, he does want to get reelected, after all. And we may need to think about extending tax reductions or some special program spending into 2012 to make sure the economy yeah. has growth. Remember. The problem with fiscal policy tightening is that the economy has to be a living, breathing organism in order to withstand that sort of tightening. We're seeing the opposite of that in places like Greece. And that is a controversy right now, folks. Avery Schenfeld nudging there toward of a sort of kind of like QE3.